Today, I'm gonna to do something a little different. I'm gonna go around talking to different CFIs on the fly, and I'm gonna ask them, what's the most common mistake that students make on eights on pylons? Let's go figure it out. All right, what do you think the most common mistake is for eights on pylons? Oh, man. Probably not using pitch, uh, instead of using bank. So she use pitch to control your line of sight. And when they finish it, they don't look to re-enter on their original point. They just kind of keep going. It's supposed to be eights on pylons. It's supposed to be an infinite eight. So you're supposed to end it and be able to look and be like, look, I can start again. Sweet. Yep. Most common mistake? Uh-huh. Uh, bad pylons. They pick bad pylons. They pick bad pylons. What does that mean? Like that pond when there's five ponds, uh, or that tree when there's a million trees. Uh, you need to pick a pylon that's prominent and you can visualize and actually differentiate between that or what's around it. Have you done your uh, eights on pylons maneuver yet? Yes, sir. Yeah, how did that go? Do you have any common mistakes you would look out for? Uh, just know your wind speed. It's kind of like doing circles around a point or ass turns. Um, you just have to use your eyes. And feather plane. A lot of people overcorrect, and that's what kind of makes it harder. You kind of just go gentle on the hands, and then it makes it a lot easier. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Sweet. Appreciate Thanks, it, man. Sir. Yeah. This is proving to be a little difficult just because it's such nice weather, everyone's out flying today. But I'm gonna get at least one to two more CFIs. Have you done your eights on pylons maneuver yet? I got a tip. You got a tip for someone? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm here for it, what, what is it? Um, when you're, rather than waiting to look for a reference point, you just bank over 25 degrees and then look what's up there to use as a point rather than like, all right, you wait for your point. All right, you can turn in too early, you can turn in too late. You just turn uh, 25 bank, and then you look what's out there off your wing and then use that as a reference point. Ooh, there's Evan, I'm gonna get him. I'm gonna get him good. Howdy, sir. Doing, right? Yeah, I have a question for you. Have me, have me. Yeah, well, I have to shut this door so I don't let you guys see out. Um, I would say just letting that pylon escape your your uh, your lateral axis or that wing tip, so to speak. Because I mean, I tell them just draw a line between two two rivet lines on the wing and just keep the pylon between it. And sometimes sometimes students will kind of just let it get away from them, or they'll keep it like consistently behind or consistently ahead. And I'll kind of put my head on both sides of them to make sure like I want to make sure this is not my perspective messing me up. But yeah, sometimes they'll do that. Yeah, and um, what is it that's making them do that? Is it like too much? I would say not gauging, not gauging that they're, or not gauging the winds properly. Okay. Because um, you start 45 left down when you slowly yeah. move into the headwind, right? So you should generally be pitching oh, down nice. when conditions are yeah, nice. perfectly stable, right? Uh, just to maintain that ground speed. So yeah. uh, sometimes they do that. So. Sounds good. Yeah. I just put you on the spot. I it's appreciate all good. you. It's all good. There you guys have it. We heard from three different certified flight instructors, and um, I think we got some pretty good answers. We even got to talk to some of the students about their previous experiences performing eights on pylons. And uh, if you guys did enjoy this, I would appreciate if you hit the like, comment, and subscribe button. That definitely lets me know you enjoyed it, and I'll make more videos like this. We'll see you guys on the next video here on the Thrust Flight Channel.